Welcome to Ivy Church. Welcome to Ivy Church. Welcome to Ivy Church. Welcome to Ivy Church. Good to see you. Welcome to Ivy Church. Good morning and welcome to Ivy Church. My name's Louise and I'm one of the leaders here at Ivy. If you're a regular to Ivy, then welcome back. But if you're new and this is your first time checking us out, then a huge welcome to you. But wherever you are at home or on holiday somewhere, in the car, maybe you're watching from somewhere else, it is great to welcome you to church as online church today. And if you're new, why don't you check us out at ivychurch.org? Everything that you need to know about us is on there. And if you've been away or you've missed any of the talks, then head over to our YouTube channel and catch up on the talks there. If you're joining us today on the website, then why don't you say hi in the chat? Use it as a space to ask questions, to give encouragements to one another, to be together as an online community. And I'd also love to remind you that the online team are here to pray with you at any point during the service. And if you're watching via the website, you'll see that there's a prayer button. Just click on that and one of the team will be happy to pray with you. We are in our Discipleship Pathway series at the moment. Last week you heard from me where I shared about what it means to lead like Jesus. And today we have the last in our series where Steve Small is sharing with us about how we can be deployed into the world. So this is your opportunity now to get your Bibles ready, to grab a pen, a highlighter, whatever it is you need as you listen this morning to underline verses and to make some notes. We're going to worship together in a moment, but before we do, let's pray together. God, we thank you for a new day. We thank you that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for your forgiveness, your unconditional love and your grace. And we thank you that each one of us are precious to you. And I pray for us this morning that as we listen and we read your word afresh today, I pray that we will know you close and that we will feel your presence in that space wherever it is that we are. In your name we pray. Amen. Shout your name on 
There's no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. Jesus is our God. We will sing. Shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. Yes, you are Lord of all the earth. You are Lord of all the earth. We'll shout your name, shout your name. Skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, oh Lord. So, Father, we come before you now and let go. Let go of those things that we've been holding on to so tightly. And in that exchange that you give strength and that you give joy and that you give hope. So that we may follow you all the days of our lives. You call me out upon the Some
afraid anymore When oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine Jesus, I thank you that you are on the move. I thank you that your Holy Spirit is with us all of the time, close by our sides, guiding us and loving us. God, I thank you that you are enough, that no matter what we are facing, what challenges we need to overcome, that because of your love for us, we can put our trust, our faith in you, and you are more than enough. So thank you, Jesus, and we are expectant to hear from you this morning. We pray we'll have ears to hear all that you have for us today. Amen. In a moment, we're going to hear from Steve. But before we do that, we're going to give an opportunity to give back to God. And we want to say a huge thank you to those of you who give faithfully to Ivy. As when it comes to giving to this church, we get to both honour and join God in what he is doing here to extend his kingdom. When we give, it's not just about making a sacrifice. It's part of our worship to him in giving our everything and our all. It's God working in and through us and teaching us about when we sow well, we will reap an incredible harvest. So if you'd like to give, you can follow the link on the screen now. You can give at any time during the service or through the week. Let's hear from Steve. Hello, it's great to share with you today. I'm Steve. I'm part of the staff team at Ivy. We have uh, loved getting to know so many new people uh, who've joined us over the summer. And um, we have been, we've been talking and thinking and putting into practice different parts of our discipleship pathway at Ivy. This is a simple way to help you and me work out how to get to know God better, how to grow in, in your relationship with him and others, and how you go and join in with God's mission. The pathway helps us discover what is next in our walk with Jesus. We've heard about how we discover God, how we need to be delivered, devoted and developed as disciples of Jesus. And today we are looking at deploy, how we go and join in with God's mission, making disciples who make disciples. So let's pray. Father, I pray that you help us know who you are, uh, help us know who we are in you, uh, what you are calling us to next, how we can go and how we can be part of your mission for the world. Amen. Can you remember being a kid? If you are a kid, then that might be easier for you than the rest of it. Believe it or not, I remember some things from being a kid back in the 20th century, the 1980s. I know living on a, a quiet street where not much happened, I was and, I st and still am an introvert. So I did my best to limit uh, further social interactions. My world, as well as my surname, was fairly small. However, I was fortunate enough to be able to read, although slowly, I had access to books, and occasionally I was allowed to watch our 14-inch colour TV, and on very special occasions, go to the cinema. My screen time, get this kids, was initially limited to Dukes of Hazard on a Saturday afternoon, where I'd race around our house on my sit-on toy car. Uh, there was the option of watching Gardner's World with my parents. No, thank you. Uh, so you can imagine what happened to my little world when I watched an entire film. Star Wars blew my mind. I remember going to bed, not being able to sleep and pretending I was on a mission for the Rebel Alliance in my very own X-Wing, taking on the evil empire. The force was strong. And as I grew up, it was then Indiana Jones, E.T., Back to the Future. This year it's been 14 peaks. If you've not watched it yet, I recommend it. What were the first films you watched that transported you to another world and adventure? Along with the thrill of watching an entire film as a kid, there was also a bit of a come down, an anticlimax, a feeling of disappointment and emptiness that the film had ended, it wasn't real life, and I was back at home without the same opportunity for adventure except in my imagination. That feeling of what am I doing with my life, or as I get older, what have I done with my life, uh, bubbles to the surface. I remember the same feeling of both excitement and what about me when reading 
Christian books like Chasing the Dragon, God Smuggler, uh, Heavenly Man, Jesus Freaks, Run Baby Run, and the Bible, sitting in church on a hard pew thinking, when will this end and the real adventure begin? Is the Bible false advertising? How do the stories of Abraham, Moses, Joshua, Gideon, Elijah and Elisha, Esther, David, Ruth, Mary and the disciples compare to your life? I know they don't look much like mine. Maybe you've had similar disillusions. Recently, Christian documentaries like Free Burma Rangers, which if you're part of Ivy, you can watch for free uh, through uh, Right Now Media, probably if you're above a certain age, or um, Sheep and Monks Wolves. These documentaries have really affected me and changed me. But how does that change work its way out into how I live my life and follow Jesus? Isn't following Jesus supposed to be an adventure of biblical proportions? So why can it sometimes feel like it's boiled down to time on a Sunday morning or a midweek group or a quick prayer over breakfast and scanning a bit of the Bible? Don't get me wrong, there can be incredible moments in these times and places when God speaks to us, when we have a revelation, when healing comes, when worship takes off and God's spirit moves. They are important and crucial. Uh, but is that all? Are those the peaks of our adventure with Jesus? In every real adventure, there are long, boring bits that are sped up through cutscenes and montages and films, briefly referenced in books but largely left out. The training, the searching, the recovery, the waiting. There were big highs and big lows and dull parts to all adventures. So I guess the question around deploy in our discipleship pathway isn't are you entertained it isn't does your life feel fun and exciting or are you succeeding it isn't even is god meeting your needs or are you becoming a better person the question is are you saying yes to jesus are you out of your comfort zone are you dreaming praying and aiming for something only god can make happen have you counted the cost picked up your cross and started following jesus to reach and disciple others for him is the end of the story going to crash and burn unless God comes through for you? Are you ready to give your life for Jesus who gave his life for you? The question is, who are you? Why are you here? What is God's purpose for your life on earth? Do you know God's call on your life and what you are doing about it? If you don't know God yet, that is the first step, discovering God. Discover God by asking Jesus to introduce himself to you. Ask Jesus into your life. Say sorry for the sin, the mistakes and self in selfishness in your life. Turn away from it and commit yourself to Jesus and ask for his Holy Spirit to help you. Get baptised. Start your discipleship adventure. You can do that today. Find someone you can talk to and pray about this with. If you've given your life to Jesus but don't know what God is calling you to, what an exciting place to be. Be brave and courageous. Ask God, pray fast. Offer your whole self to God and ask him to show you what he wants you to do and where to start. He will have already been preparing you. If you do know what God is calling you to but are avoiding it, be brave, be courageous, trust God and take that first step. Don't put it off. Set a day. Today is a, uh, a good day, better than tomorrow. Tell someone what you're going to do and do it. If you do know God's call and are going about it, help others do the same. And if you are helping others do the same, share what God is doing through you all to encourage the rest of us. Following Jesus and helping others do the same is the ultimate adventure. It may not look like the films or the stories. It isn't over in a couple of mesmerising hours. We can't take uh, part just by observing. It takes sacrifice, bravery, action, obedience, patience. It takes a lifetime which stretches into eternity and we don't do it alone. God is with us and we go together. The adventure to go to be deployed starts back in Genesis 12 in the chapter before. Uh, the nations are scattered across the earth and then in 12 God calls Abraham and says, Go from your country, your people and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and I will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all people on earth will be blessed through you. The start of Abraham's adventure and ours is to fully trust God, respect and obey him and to let go of everything so that God
can bless us and use us to reach all peoples. When we do this, we think less about ourselves, we stop working for ourselves, always trying to make our lives better, and we discover God's purpose for our lives, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Instead of just looking for your face in the photo, your name in the story, your part in the adventure, you start seeing others God is calling you to reach with his love and good news. We stop looking just for the Bible passages that make us feel good, and we see that God blesses us to be a blessing to others, to all people and all nations. From Abraham, known as the father of faith because he listened to God, trusted him and went, the mission continues through his descendants, just as God promises through Isaac, then Jacob. The mission is repeated, the adventures continue through David all the way to Jesus. Uh, and God's mission is a, a flipping upside down of what the world tells us to do, to play it safe, to make sure we have enough for ourselves, to impress other, others and make time for me. God wants to use you wherever you are at, your, no matter your age, your gender, your background, whatever you have done in the past, whatever you are thinking right now. God called Moses, who was on the run, after murdering someone, and when God called Moses through the burning bush, he told Moses his name and told him to go to Pharaoh because God would be with him and use him to set his people free. He showed Moses miraculous signs to demonstrate his power and presence. He turned Moses, uh, his staff into a snake and back again. He made Moses' hand leprous and healed it again. Yet after all that, plus God answering Moses' questions and challenging his excuses, still Moses said, Pardon your servant, Lord, please send someone else. Moses nearly missed out on the adventure and being part of God's mission. There were dicey moments, squeaky bum times, as well as very big, long, dull stretches uh, after the incredible exodus. The Israelites escaped Egypt through the Red Sea when they were uh, wandering around and around in the desert. The desert won't have felt like an adventure day to day, despite the occasional pillar of fire and, and cloud and miraculous food and water. They ended up stuck in the desert because they were too scared to trust God and go to take the promised land. We describe our mission uh, at Ivy as helping people find their way back to God. We talk about multiplying churches like lifeboats rather than cruise ships. I have a friend, some of you know here, who has worked on cruise ships in exotic places. He told me on the, on the ships they have a fully equipped mortuary with space for more than one, just in case anyone dies before they reach the next port. Some might think, what a way to go, out at sea, relaxing, enjoying the finer things in life, living your best life. Uh, but I have another friend who is a lifeboatman and every week he will drop whatever he's doing and risk his life to help save lives out at sea. And there's no mortuary on his boat, only what is needed to rescue people. We want to be in a business and mission of rescuing people and reaching others for Jesus, rather than making things easier and more comfortable for ourselves. So, Jesus outlines the big picture of the whole mission for each of us who follow him in what is called the Great Commission. The mission started through Abraham's obedience and his descendants up to Jesus who taught about and showed us his kingdom, which we are now part of through his death and resurrection. The next part of the mission is for us to do what Jesus says and see his kingdom come. In Matthew 28, 16 to 20, it says, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is a mission Jesus is calling us into, however it may look for you. In Mark 16, Verse 15, he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to all creation. And in Luke 24, 46 to 49, Jesus then opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah 
will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. In John 20, 21 to 22, again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Lastly, in Acts 1, verse 8, Jesus says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. In a moment, we will ask the Holy Spirit to come. He's already here, but the invitation to you is to receive the Holy Spirit and ask God to show you what he wants you to do next and have the courage to do it. This church has always, uh, since it first started, through Oliver Brockbank and Mr Green, been about God's mission. Many have gone from here to the city and to far-flung places. Many given everything and risked their lives to share Jesus with people of all nations. Ivy has mission partners in Manchester, the UK and across the globe sharing the good news of Jesus. We're cheering them on, but they're also cheering you on because we're all called to make disciples right where you are. You are here for such a time as this. I counted over 22 nations represented on the few streets around my house. Many have, uh, a sh of us have a strange idea of what a missionary is. J. John says a missionary is not someone who crossed the sea, it's someone who sees the cross. If you get what Jesus has done for you and want to point others to him, then you have the heart of a missionary. God wants to deploy you now where you live, where you work, study, rest and play. This is something we do out of love for God and the people we know and meet because Jesus has changed our lives and it is by far the best thing we have to offer anyone, better than any treasure or worldly thing we can give or offer. I don't know what God is asking you to do next. Maybe it is big and scary. Maybe it involves huge sacrifice. Maybe it is just taking that first step and telling someone that you love and follow Jesus and asking if they want to know more. We are living in exciting times. So many people are open to discovering Jesus and they need your help to, to do that. Uh, there are more people than ever before who have never heard of Jesus. Unreached people. Uh, but also within a few years, for the first time ever, every people group will have, ha have access somehow to the gospel in their own language. Every language on earth. Not only that, but every ethnos people group will have a church with disciples somewhere amongst their own people worshipping Jesus in their own language. Uh, there's a long way to go, but the very beginning of Jesus' great commission is starting to be seen in our lifetime, and we get to be a part of it. In Luke 10, verse 2, it says, Jesus told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Many of us have our alarms set for two minutes past ten to remind us to pray for God to send workers, including ourselves, into his harvest field. Imagine if the workers weren't few, what this world would be like. Over two billion people in this world call themselves Christians, but very few are actually working for Jesus in the harvest. Will you be one of God's harvest workers? Will you help the next person who is lost and alone find their way back to God to be found and at home with him? So many churches have become very good at sending Christians to help Christians become better Christians, but we want to be lifeboats, not cruise ships, to those who need Jesus. We want to join in with the real adventure God is calling us on. Let's not get stuck in the desert. The real adventure isn't about going from place to place, but from person to person. Who is the next person God is asking you to connect with and share him? Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that you love us more than we will ever know. Thank you that you have blessed us and that you gave Jesus so we could know you, but not just to know you, uh, to have a relationship with you, but be on the adventure of mission with you. Thank you that we are not alone. You are always with us. We have the gift of your Holy Spirit and we have each other. Father, fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit and send us to where you want us to go. Help us to see the opportunities you're putting in front of us and help us have the courage to take them. 
Speak to each of us about what you would have us do next. Here I am, Lord, send me. All I have and all I am is yours. And we say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Thank you, Steve, for such an encouraging word. I love the challenge of if you do know what God is calling you to but are avoiding it, be brave and courageous. Trust God and take the first step. Don't put it off. Set a day. Tell someone what you're going to do and do it. There'll be some questions now that come up on the screen. And we want to give you an opportunity to reflect on what it is that you've heard. If you're on your own at the moment, then why not write your answers in the chat and share on there? But if you're with others in a room, perhaps you could pause the chat now to discuss your thoughts.
Just is my reward All of my devotion Now there's nothing in this world That can ever satisfy Through every trial My soul will sing No turning back I've been set free Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me Everything I need is in you Everything I need Christ my And this hope will never fail Heaven is our home Through every storm My soul will sing Jesus is here To God be the glory I wonder what it is that you need to do as a result of what you've heard from Steve today. I want to encourage you to look out for more information about Ivy's discipleship course, which is going to start in the autumn, to equip you as a disciple on this journey. 
We would love to invite you to any of our services that are coming up in the next couple of weeks. We have in-person services at Didsbury and at Cheadle Hume as well. But we also have our online service here at 10.30 and you are super welcome to any of those you choose. Don't forget to keep checking the website for everything that's going on across Ivy. We have so many things that are happening. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I have loved being with you all today. Have a blessed week and we will see you very soon.